Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about visual shaders and textures in Godot 3. If you haven't seen the previous video on visual shader basics, then I recommend that you go and watch that first. As an initial setup, I have a visual shader that's attached to a material, and my material is attached to my mesh. I've also imported four textures, a normal map, an emissive map, a base color, or albedo, and an AORM. This is an ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic map channel packed into one texture. The order of this doesn't really matter. You might see this as AORM, or you might see this as RMAO, but this is a channel packed texture. Ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic, they don't need a full color range. All they need is black and white information. So you can utilize each channel as data. If you open up Photoshop or GIMP, you'll be able to look at the channels or the layers, and you can see the red, green, and blue channel, or the red, green, blue, and alpha channel. Now for the import settings, even though Godot usually does a good job of this, Anything that is meant to be used as a mask or channel packed, the sRGB should be disabled. And anything that's meant to be used in color, like our albedo, it should be enabled. The emissive that we're using here is meant to use all color, so it's enabled. And the last thing to talk about is the normal map. Under the import settings in normal map, you want to make sure that this is enabled. Now let's take a look at our visual shader. The node that we're looking for is texture uniform. You can use just a texture, but this won't turn into a shader parameter, so you won't be able to see it in your material. In the texture uniform, the first thing we have is what we want to call it. So we'll call this albedo. And then the second option we have is what kind of texture it is. For the albedo, it's a color. Now we're going to copy this three more times. The second one is going to be our AORM. And this isn't color. This is actually data. And then our third one, this is going to be emissive and this is going to be color. And then our fourth one, this is going to be our normal map. And we'll change that type to normal map. Now the thing to note at this point is even though you have these in here, if you go back to your material, you'll see that there are no shader parameters yet. You can only see them after we hook them up. So we'll hook up our albedo first, and we'll come back over to take a look, and we'll put our albedo or base color texture in. We'll see it shows up. Go back to our visual shader. And the next one we'll hook up is our normal map. So the normal map, we don't want to plug this into normal. These are the normals of the mesh. You want to hook this into normal map. But if you do make that mistake, hold down control on your keyboard and click, and it'll disconnect. And after that, we'll go back over and we'll make sure it's hooked up. Next up, let's do the AORM. Now, like we said before, this is the ambient inclusion, roughness, and metallic. But as you can see, there's only an RGB and an alpha channel that we can choose from. And what we want is we want to break the RGB out. The way that we do that is with a new node and this is called a vector decompose. This is going to take your RGB and split it. So with that done, the first one that we want is the AO. So we'll plug that right into AO. And the second one we want is roughness. So we'll plug that in. And the third one we want is metallic. And just to make sure, we'll go to our material and we'll drag that in if it's not in there apparently already. And we're all set. And last but not least, we have our emissive, which we can just plug right into our emissive. And we go back to our material. We can drag that in. Now, if we wanted to add a little bit more to our emissive so we control the intensity, we want to add a multiply node. We want to make sure that we're not using the scalar multiply, we want to use the vector multiply. We'll drag the emissive RGB into the top, and then we'll make a scalar uniform. and we'll plug that into the bottom, and then we'll plug this whole system into the emissive. And we'll name this emissive intensity. And now you'll have intensity control over the emissive. All right guys, that covers visual shaders and textures in Godot 3. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by liking the video and commenting down below. Thanks guys.